Hi guys, I'm Shmi, and today we're at Mansori, where I'm about to go and drive the big one, the Veyron Linea Vincero. This is their top end, highest of individualization and personalization programs on the Bugatti Veyron 16.4 Coupe. And I'm gonna go out and take it for a drive. We'll show you around the car first, and I'm also gonna be joined by Benzine Ben, who has never been in any Bugatti. I've never even sat in a Veyron before, so I'm fairly <laughs> excited to not only sit in a Veyron, but this one. Yes, a Mansori Veyron. And well, firstly, let's just go for a little bit of a walk around it so I can explain to you the car, because this is the car that we're gonna be driving. It comes in as the normal 16.4 coupe, which has 1,001 horsepower from the quad turbocharged eight liter W16. So the Veyron has been like a poster car for a decade. It is hugely impressive. And this car has come in and gone through this program of customization. So it has the full carbon fiber body that you can see, a new look to the front end aero, so more cooling in through the larger vents. It has the V at the front to represent the Vincero name in the Bugatti grille. And I should explain that a little bit more too. Vincero, Vincero means I win, I win from Ness and Dorma. So it's quite a cool little thing. There are only two of these so far. It has new wheels on it, new Mansori wheels, specific to the car. Slightly different sort of body shape with this groove here through the front wings, um, more aggressive side skirts. But wait until you see the inside, by the way. That's, that's gonna be really something. And it's sat here in the handling mode with the rear spoiler up, obviously the mode whereby you can drive it at 250 miles an hour if you so wish. We won't be doing that today. Um, it's got a new exhaust system, so it should sound quite nice when the car gets driven out of here. And from the back, you get that view over the engine, sitting open to the elements. Where also I notice you've got this additional carbon piece for more aero as well over the back. But are you ready to see the inside? Are you ready to see the inside? Yes, I am. Let's uh, crack this open. Wow. This is personalized. To you the don't extreme. get that impression, do you, when, when you're looking through the window, but then you open the door and you're hit with that. It is, it's really nice. I like this a lot. You've got the sort of Alcantara steering wheel, all this sort of special pressed and painted leather that you can see through the seat, the different sort of um, parts that sort of built it's up. It's like a reptilian effect, isn't it? Almost, yes. Alcantara everywhere, the white and black, Vincero headrest stamp. But this is the sort of pretty iconic interior of a Veyron. And yeah, it looks like the ultimate in luxury and quality. Nice carbon touches here on the dashboard around the back and the rear view mirror as well. Wowzers. So that's, that's where we're gonna go in a moment and experience this, um, which is really quite exciting because this is sort of pretty much the pinnacle, he says, as a noisy car just drive by. You probably heard that. Wait and stay tuned for more of that. So this is the car we're gonna head out in. Um, I'm a little bit excited, just a little I'm a bit, bit more excited. You're a bit more excited? Yes. What do you mean? I'm, I'm driving the Veyron. You're driving, yeah, that's <laughs> true. Been a, yeah. Fortunately for me, I am in a very lucky position that I have driven the Bugatti Veyron before. I've driven maybe three or four, I think, Veyrons before in videos for the Shmiel 50 channel. But this is something else because it's so bespoke and so customized. Um, so I think it's time to hear it firing up. And uh, actually, maybe I will jump in and do the honors of that oh. and um, see what it is going to be like. Okay then, so let me step in here into the Mansori Linea Vincero. It it's quite small and cozy in a Bugatti, but this is it. I like that, the Linea Vincero logo in the carbon fiber, Bugatti clock at the top, everything about the car. Put the key in. Tell it to wake it up, and then this is the big button to press. And here it comes. This is pretty much the most iconic car I think of my generation, the Veyron. And then this is a particularly exclusive version of it. So, what's left for me to jump in? Let's take the car out. This is it then. This is inside the Veyron. 
We're out of handling mode, so the car's a little bit higher. That means the wing comes back down, but that's also known as safe and sensible road driving mode. Um, into gear. Away we go. Let's experience this. This is this is this is it. You've now been in a moving Veyron. Just we... sitting in it immediately feels special. Should it's we like stop being in a first class flight or something? Yes. Yeah, yeah. In a way that so many other cars just don't replicate. And I'm just in super, super, super take it slow and steady mode right now. Um, I don't think I've probably ever been as careful as this <laughs> in a car. <laughs> okay, away we go. And the most amazing thing about the Veyron is the effortless way in which it pulls away. Yeah. It's just off you go, and you get. I've got this power gauge, so I've got a gauge up to 1,001. It shows me how much oh, yeah, power yeah. I'm using, um, which is a rather different way to look at it. And a big rev counter. I'm just sorry, taking everything in at once, very oh, slowly, so very much. slowly and gingerly. <laughs> it's it's quite a surreal experience for me. I remember like reading about this car, well not this specific car, but the Veyron when it first came out, and yeah. just all the mind-blowing facts about it. Like I'm sure you you know most of them off the top of you your head. But like, I actually don't. I don't know. I couldn't tell you the 0 to 62 miles an hour speed off my head, but no, it's fast. But the more the crazy ones, like I think. These magnesium stalks cost like sixteen thousand pounds or something. Like, <laughs> and on a normal Veyron, you have to change the tires every three thousand miles. The wheels every and how much the tires change. cost? I, I don't want to know, but they were specially developed. Like Michelin's. fifty grand, I think, is but, the number that springs to mind. Every second set of tires, you need new wheels. Every six thousand <laughs> miles, you have to have new wheels on the car. But this car's in a uh, speedometer in miles per hour. I notice goes up to two hundred and eighty. <laughs> the top, the uh, the Chiron shows a top on the uh, speedometer of 500 kilometers per hour, which is just cool. <laughs> Ambitious. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's, it's probably not. Wait for the Chiron Super Sport yeah. in the future. But yeah. you just drive along like this, and yeah, it's super firm. Like the seats are very, very rigid and solid, um, and the ride is firm, but it's not uncomfortable. The no. gearbox is super, super silky smooth. Effortlessly slides from one gear into the next, um, and there's no. There's almost no drama, and that's why the car was so popular, because it does the performance thing as it does, mm. but in a way that it's not like... It, it's, it's not, not like a song and, and dance, it just does it. And um, the reliability of them as well is one of yeah. the big things. From the Veyron owners I know and the people I speak to, the thing everyone loves about their car is that nothing goes wrong with it. It yeah. just works. Uh, P1s and Ferraris 918s, they've all had a flurry of problems, issues, different sure. things. And uh, the same from Koenigseggs and Pagani's. But Bugatti make this car that in every way is just bulletproof and holds together. Now, we're slightly out of this village, we're just going to wait until I can see the visibility to go past this uh, very, very, very slow bike. And it's opened up slightly, and away we go, and it just glides in the noise of the W16. And when you lift off, you get that kind of whoosh of the turbos. <laughs> They are loving it. <laughs> Those guys, um, yeah, probably didn't expect to see a Bugatti in wherever we are right now today. Oh my goodness. Any time you even see one of those, one of these on the road is quite a special experience. Yeah, for sure. It's, it's, and it's so recognisable. Everybody, yes. everybody knows the Bugatti very wrong. Yeah. So, um, we're in normal drive mode, but let's drop down some gears just to feel a little bit of the power. I'm not going to go crazy, but just the effortless behind you. Zima shifting. It's, it's beautiful. You do get that sense that it has so much to give. Yes. And it's barely working to do that. Yeah. And then you get the whoosh. <laughs> I mean, I bet that horsepower needle has barely moved from zero. Yeah. Has it? <laughs> That's 400 horsepower. Just a casual, less than half of its ability. Uh, excuse me if my concentration is a little bit on the road. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. I forgive <laughs> you. I'm happy to just sit here and stare at all of the details for several hours, probably. The Mansori interior in here is so, so beautiful. I'm going to sport and see what that's like. Uh, that's I know drive. It's, it's a bit flash, a bit over the top, but I do really like this sort of... I don't know if it's quite alligatory, but it's definitely uh, yeah. some sort of reptile uh, imitation. Um, it kind of matches up with the carbon. It's got like, not the same, but like a similar sort of pattern to it. Yeah. yeah. Thing, things are a little out of date in some ways. 
you know, the controls and things are all a little bit, well now you have... The one thing that really stands out to me is the hazard button. It just looks very sort of out of place almost. Oh. But I suppose if you need to find the hazard button, you're not going to miss it there, <laughs> no. are you? Interesting first observation in a bear run. <laughs> That's where the hazard button is. Yeah. Well, if they're so reliable, then uh, you probably won't need it that often. No, just to let people know when I'm pulling over awkwardly to stop and take photos yes. or turn around. Yeah. Because, hey, I'm driving a bear on. I yeah. want as many pictures as I can get. Oh my goodness. Well, not going to forget this one. No, neither am I. Okay, the way it pulls away is just effortless. And it, it, I, I don't know how else to describe it, other than saying it's seamless. The way the yeah. power just comes down and it just keeps on flowing through, and away you go. It it's, doesn't give you that like kick in the back that you get from from a lot of supercars. It's more like as if someone's dropped you down a slide. Yeah. You know, it's that the same way that gravity up. just relentlessly pulls you down. This just pushes you forwards almost as if it's no concern to it whatsoever, it just propels you along the road. And I'm sure that's the quad turbo is doing their thing. It just builds up. And then... Ooh. And warp speed! <laughs> <laughs> it's literally warp speed engaged, yes. isn't it? <laughs> oh my goodness! Wow, this is special. This is very... Very, 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 very special. <laughs> Indeed. Oh, it's like, I don't know, it's the ultimate. What's more ultimate than a Veyron? Nothing. No, and like you say, for, for our generation, this is the sort of poster child. Completely, you know, when, nothing when, touched it. No, nothing when, touched it. When we were younger, you know, before we had driving licenses and, and stuff, um, there were the, the poster cars of like, the Diablos, F40s, F50s sort of yeah, thing, yeah, and yeah. then of our driving generation, this is This came one. along, the numbers just blew the world away, and then it actually did it, and it lived yeah. up to it, yeah. and just completely different cup of tea. So gentle to drive. It's so gentle at heated seats, you know, all that kind of stuff. Next to the launch control. Yeah, <laughs> heated seats or launch control, which do you want? You wouldn't want to press the wrong one accidentally, would but you? You might, you never know. <laughs> well, I think if you did press the launch control, you'd uh, you'd have a very warm bum either way. True. <laughs> wow. Gassy feeling. It moves, doesn't it? <laughs> it's the fact that that's barely, you know, that's yeah. nothing like 100%. I didn't, no. I didn't look at the power meter to see what I was using, but nowhere near 1,001 horsepower. And this is, you know, you can have 1,200 horsepower if you have the uh, Super Sport or the Vitesse. Yeah, when you feel the standard model is lacking. Yeah. Overload. Yeah, that very slight high pitched noise at yeah, the very the end. Yeah, the winds and the turbos. There are cool cars, and then there's this. And yeah. I think, actually, you know what? I think we're being remarkably chilled for what we're doing right now. We should be like, oh my god! And away we go. <laughs> you know, oh. when you drive an aerial atom and your face sort of warps yeah. back because you're outside, you kind of get that inside <laughs> the car. way like it doesn't take much press and it's not screaming and shouting it's just moving on at a rate of sort of pace that you can't comprehend you no. can't like it's not normal and this car you know the first Veyron is like 12 years old 13 years old now yeah this car I don't know the exact almost thing. a classic <laughs> almost a classic do you know what fun fact so the first Veyron came out in 2004 something like that my mini my old Mini was 2001, <laughs> so the first Veyron is only three years older, newer, sorry, than yeah. my classic Mini. <laughs> That's just insane. It doesn't make any sense. 62 horsepower versus 1001. Yeah. Quite a development stretch in that yeah. time. <laughs> oh, goodness me. Well, as experiences go, not much tops driving a Veyron no. at all. How is it from the passenger seat? Pretty good. <laughs> yeah, I won't be forgetting this in a while. That's for sure. What are you doing? Well, I just, whenever I step into a, a car that I've not been in, I love to mess with all the controls yeah. and, and buttons and things because you, 
can really tell the, the quality and uh, craftsmanship of a car by the attention to the small details. Like, yeah, yeah. this just feels satisfying to turn. <laughs> you know, it's like a bespoke watch or something. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it just really betrays the level of craftsmanship that's gone into the car. And of course, you know, it's a Veyron. It uh, should. Yes. Wow. Wow, indeed. Needless to say, this has been pretty fun. Yeah. But yeah. we're going to have to bring it to a close shortly. Um, just one thing, if you were ever intending to travel on a road trip in a Veyron, let me just show you in the uh, luggage space. Uh, leave it down here, pop that open, see if you can find it. Catch in the middle. I did it. You don't have much room. No. We've got one lake, one laptop <laughs> bag, and that's that's your bonnet. That's, that's well, you just arrive over. at your destination and then buy more clothes. Yes. <laughs> or have it following you in a more appropriate second car. Close that, click it down. But this car is just something completely out of this world. It's by far and away the craziest Veyron I've ever driven. <laughs> it's the craziest Veyron I've ever sat in. <laughs> It's one way to look at it. So a big thanks to Mansori for this opportunity. Thanks to Benzine for joining me for the ride <laughs> in the uh, Yeah, it was a chore, right? <laughs> oh, Complete yeah. like hard work. Worst thing, worst thing he's ever done. I'm, Horrible day in the office. I've just sent photos and videos to friends and family being that guy, you know. <laughs> that guy. I just went in a Bugatti. <laughs> yeah, sucks well, to be you. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's been really fun. Thank you very much for watching, guys. Thank you very much to Mansori for allowing me to drive this Linea Vinciato. And yeah, I don't really know what else to say. We're going to take it back now, but this has been awesome. Oh, yes. <laughs> I'll catch you again soon. Cheers.